Hi, I'm Jasmine, and I'm the author of the new fantasy novel, Archaic, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about my book and my characters. Archaic is the book I just published, uh, self-published actually, and I wanted to let people know what it's about and who the characters are. My official plot description is, Archaic presents the battle of good and evil in a realm of sorcerers and angels as an evil force plans to unleash an unimaginable horror on Earth. Cornelius Alawar, leader of the sorcerers, helping humankind is unexpectedly reunited with his grandson, Eric. Cornelius, who has lived almost two centuries and is known more recently as Neil, had thought Eric was killed along with his mother, Leanna, 13 years before. Having found himself different from other boys all his young life, Eric happily joins his grandfather in the realm of Luxwick. But life in Luxwick is not as peaceful as he expects. Cornelius has been at odds against a powerful sorcerer called Malthus, whom he has shared a connection with since birth. And now Eric has found himself caught in their web, but Eric wishes to become a hero as he doggedly tries to slap an evil plot before it comes to his full fruition. So Archaic is officially a contemporary fantasy. Um, it doesn't have adult content, as, or, as in it doesn't have mature themes but I do market it for adults um, just because it's not, you know, it's not Harry Potter, it's not kids running around with magic, it's not all that very useful, those useful things that I loved as a kid, but uh, it's more serious, if you understand what I mean. So the thing I wanted to talk about more um, is some of the characters you would get to know if you decide to read my book. So our main character is Eric Blackwood. He's a 13 year old boy who was separated from his family when he was a baby. His family had no idea where he was, and but he's a sorcerer. So he struggled. So the thing with Eric is that he grew up on earth without anyone there to guide him with his magic. So he, growing up in an orphanage um, and being so isolated because of his power, he's very mature for his age. Uh, he doesn't know how to rely on other people and that leads to a lot of um, unfortunate circumstances once he's introduced to the land of Luxwick. He's artistic, he's kind, but he does get a little frustrated when he thinks he can't help. When I wrote that character, I just, I wanted a young protagonist to really be, fill that role for the readers, uh, you know, so that you can get to know the world and uh, all the information with him. And I remember when I first started writing the character, um, I was in my head, you know, you always end up picturing certain actors or certain types of people, characters, and I was watching Supernatural at the time, so um, the actor Colin Ford, who plays young Sam, him not so much on Supernatural, but a mix of that calm behavior of Sam, for sure, but also uh, I kept thinking about when he was on We Bought a Zoo, and he's really angry and closed off, and I thought of it as this character, this is what he could have been, but he managed to keep himself grounded. So this book has two primary protagonists. One is Eric, but the other is Cornelius Alvar, who goes by Neil. And Neil is also a sorcerer, but he's lived a different life than the rest of the characters because he's immortal. I thought of him and the antagonist who we'll talk about later after I'd seen X-Men First Class with James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. And I'm a big James McAvoy fan but their relationship, how two people can be so close and then get divided 
by their own beliefs and what they want, you know, in life. The goals can turn them into enemies. But, but, but I was focused on um, Xavier, how he behaved. Neil started to become more prominent in my head. This man who, because he's lived for so long, carries so much weight, so much pressure that he can easily share with others, but he feels like he can't. And because of that, he pushes himself. Now, I mentioned how Xavier and Magneto inspired my relation, the relationships between Neil and the antagonist. Okay, so the antagonist's name is Malphalus, and he's a very mysterious character in this book because even though he's the main antagonist, He's more of a lurking presence, kind of like Voldemort was in Order of the Phoenix, where he's not actually there fighting the characters for the most part, but they know he's out there, and that causes a lot of strain and a lot of tension. What makes this relationship between the antagonist and the protagonist so special to me is I thought, what if they weren't close friends? What if it wasn't that they were friends and turned into enemies like um, Magneto and Xavier? What if they were connected? They had no choice but to know each other. It gets revealed, it'll get revealed pretty early on that this connection Cornelius and Malphalus have shared since birth is a mental connection. They can sometimes hear each other's thoughts see what the other is saying and they can't really control it so even though they're adversaries even though they want nothing to do with each other even though Neil at least who we see his perspective wants nothing to do with Malthus he can't get rid of that connection and so it makes it so whenever Malthus causes problems Neil takes it personally because he feels like it's a piece of him who's causing all this chaos of course, every book has supporting characters, and I really adore mine. Um, the first that I came up with is Theodore Cross, who goes by Theo. And when I started writing the book, I was I was 14, really into Harry Potter, and at that point I didn't know anything about writing. So I remember when I found my old notebook with the first notes, that I had pretty much written the whole thing as like a total copy of Harry Potter. So Theodore was his defense teacher, but that got scrapped. Luckily I would forgotten about the idea for a while and by the time I got back to it I was older and actually capable of forming my own ideas. Uh, so Theodore is a man who is really close to Eric's mother. Although he is still a trained fighter. In this book, he is 36 years old and he has a short temper. He's always struggled with his temper. And so, because of that, he gets really headstrong, especially when it comes to protecting the people he cares about. I always imagined him as Colin Farrell. And for me, every time, the second I get an actor in my head, it makes me feel like they're actually a person, the character, and so it makes it easier to establish their personality. And I'm a sucker for Irish accents, so I ended up writing that in that Theodore is um, Irish. His family was from Ireland, originally his ancestors, and they spent a lot of time there growing up because of his parents. I have to say the biggest headache, but also pleasure, was the amount of research I had to do on the Irish slang because I didn't want him to be a cliche, but I didn't want it to be where the only reason you know he's Irish is because I said it, you know, it's not enough. So I did a lot of research on what the more common Irish slang is and um, when I started writing him as an Irish character. 
I know a lot of people do the whole phonetic, I think it's called phonetic, phonetic writing, where they put in the dialogue with, like, if the character's speaking with their accent, so they do the spelling that way, and I couldn't get myself to do that. I read a book once where the antagonist who ended up helping was Irish, and it was written like that, and it gave me such a headache um, that I couldn't get myself to do it, because I hated reading that dialogue that way, because instead of, um, I, I know a lot of people like it, but instead of helping me imagine the character with the Irish accent, which I feel like I can do just with a mention of it, I just gave me a headache because it's like my brain was trying to correct all these word spelling uh, but Theo is definitely one of my favorites um, now in this book there's not just sorcerers there's also angels and there are a few angels who primarily help our protagonists throughout the story uh, one of them is well two of them are the twins, Erin and Evangeline. Now, Evangeline um, started off as kind of a more boring character. She was just kind and motherly, but that's all there really was to her. And then I started, I got into Doctor Who right after high school, and I saw all this Matt Smith seasons with Karen Gillan, and that, because I had Evangeline as a redhead, even though I don't really necessarily picture Karen Gillan when I'm writing, um, she did inspire Evangeline the character a lot. Um, that's when I started making it where she's not just a journal. Um, the characters will push themselves too hard. They'll end up drained, exhausted, especially Neil. And instead of just kind of advising them to rest and take care of themselves, she'll get mad. She'll be like a mom, you know, she'll force them to rest or force them to take care of themselves. Um, and because of that, there's this very interesting relationship between Neil and Evangeline because no one pushes himself harder than Neil does. And by her side is her brother, Aaron. So technically all angels are, in a sense, siblings because they're created by the god Cyrus, but they don't share blood. So Aaron and Evangeline are very rare case that the angel who birthed them actually was given twins. And so they actually do share a blood relationship unlike the other angels. While Evangeline is willing to do anything to help her loved ones, Aaron's more of the moral compass. He knows when to and when not to break the rules. And so a lot of the time, he's the one to kind of hold her back. And with him, I've never had any actor reference. I think because I wrote him first to be Evangeline's brother and so it was easier to come up with his personality to kind of match but also balance hers out. Another character I have is Esme and Esme is um, also an angel. Uh, she's originally when I wrote her she was pretty much a copy of Evangeline. Um, she was just a nice woman who occasionally helped, but an editor I hired told me she was too much like Evangeline, and she actually suggested that I just merge the characters and get rid of her, but I had such big plans for Esme in the future that I couldn't get myself to do that, but I didn't just disregard her advice because she was right, she was too much like Evangeline, so I ended up giving her her own personality. And since her name's Esme, I decided to think about my friends and my family. I wanted her to be a hard worker, someone who, when her, her co-workers are slacking, 
she's on them, she's on them about getting the job done, uh, because her job is actually, which you'll learn about in the book, is actually very important, and the consequences, if it's done wrong, can be horrible. But I thought about, what if I have this character, just a little minor character for her to bounce off of, who is lacking, and she's always kind of on him to get the job done. And my first thought was, if she's frustrated or angry, then the most kind of natural thing is to revert to your your first language. So I have where she speaks Spanish to him <laughs> when she's frustrated. She starts speaking Spanish and he gets frustrated because he doesn't understand Spanish because he only speaks English and French. Esme is just so full of energy. She's happy, she's talkative, but then the second her job gets threatened, she, she's ready to take charge. So there are a few other characters who get introduced throughout the book, but I don't want to spoil too much about them. Uh, some of them are have a lot to do with the plot. Some of them are kind of surprises. Some are minor characters. But for me, every book I've ever read, the characters are the most important to me. Um, a lot of times you can have a plot that kind of leaves nowhere and I'll still end up falling in love with the characters and so I don't really end up caring too much. Um, so even though plot is so important to me, characters was most important to me. And I really hope that if you choose to read my book that you fall in love with these characters. Um, and love them as much as I loved creating them. Thank you for watching. I'm planning on putting a lot more videos about either books, writing, or going back to all the craft projects that I did when I started the channel. But thank you for watching. If you like it, please subscribe, hit that like button, and um, hit the notification bell if you want to see when new videos come up.